My Tinder nightmare began on January 8th, 2014, when I started texting with a beautiful woman who I knew was out of my league. I'm a 50-ish Caucasian guy, out of shape, overweight, but otherwise stable, normal. She was a 30-year-old black woman, college educated, stunningly beautiful, and very elegant and slender. Nonetheless, after a few days of texting, I invited her to join me for dinner at a very nice restaurant downtown. To my dismay, she actually accepted my invitation. I was waiting for her at the bar, and when she walked in, my jaw hit the floor. She was so beautiful, I literally lost my breath for a moment. She was taller than me in her heels and was wearing a beautiful short dress with the most amazing legs I had ever seen. She greeted me with a bright smile and a gentle hug and we were escorted to our table. We had a very good date. The conversation flowed and she seemed to have a good time as well. We decided to continue the date and went to a couple of bars for drinks. Finally, she said it was time to go home. And since she had taken Uber earlier, I offered to give her a ride home, and she quickly agreed. All this time, I thought that even though the date was fun and comfortable, I assumed it would possibly lead to a friendship at best, considering the obvious differences. Well, when we get to her place, we talked for a few minutes more. I offered to walk her to her door, but she declined. She then got out and walked around to my door. She leaned through the window and planted a very brief but sensual kiss on my lips. Your kiss is on my lips. My heart stopped. She then leaned back and smiled. I was able to stammer out an invitation to go out again and she accepted without hesitation. I was on cloud nine. I knew that this remarkable woman would have a profound effect on my life. It seemed predestined. Fast forward a couple of weeks. She and I had been seeing each other nearly every day and I was developing strong feelings already. But something was wrong. I had a weird nagging sense that she was hiding something. Although she was being very affectionate, something just felt off. Then, finally it happened. We were out at a bar together. It was a good time, but she seemed distracted. As we were leaving, she turned to me and said in a serious tone, We need to talk. I thought, this is it. The differences between us are too much for her, and I'm about to be friend-zoned. Ugh, that fucking phrase. But nothing prepared me for what came next. She asked me to listen and not say anything and I agreed. She then started out by saying that she had developed strong feelings for me, but there was something that I needed to know about her that might make me want to change my mind about pursuing a relationship. My mind was spinning. So many scenarios raced through my head. Is she married? Is she a criminal? Then I remembered a few days earlier when we were making out and I touched her breast lightly and realized that she had breast implants because it was quite hard. So I thought, oh my god, is she a transsexual? But as it turns out, she wasn't. But that would have been better than what came next. She looked at me, and with a tear in her eye, she told me that she has stage 4 breast cancer. She was originally diagnosed four years earlier, as stage 3 and had beaten it back into remission after having a double mastectomy along with radiation treatment and chemotherapy. Now it had returned to stage 4 and she was about to start chemo again in two weeks. I was floored. She then stated that she'll understand if I wanted to turn and run and she wouldn't think any less of me for it. My response was to reiterate that I adored her and I thought she was an amazing woman and if she wanted me to take this journey with her, that I would be honored to do so. We kissed and just held each other for a while. Finally, she said goodnight and went to her car to go home. 
I cried all the way home. We had a full, amazing year together. I had to go to Japan for work, and she met me there in between chemo treatments. She never cried and was always elegant. I learned what the true definition of grace meant. We lived a lifetime in 2014. She died nine months ago. Fifteen months after we met. I'm a much better man for having met her and shared in her struggle. I love you and miss you so much, Jenny.